Good morning, it's exactly 9 a.m. here. My name is Zinzi Kibiku with the top stories at this hour. We'll begin and take you to Kilifi, one of the hot spots that we're keeping an eye on. And Kilifi Deputy Governor Gideon Samburi is expected today to be charged in court for defying a government directive to self-quarantine after he returned from the country from a trip to Germany. Samburi, who was arrested on Friday afternoon, minutes after leaving the Coast General Hospital, spent the weekend at Port Police. And our reporter Francis Mtalaki will be joining us later on to give us further details on this story. Now, rice farmers in Yaktike may be one of the latest casualties to feel the pinch of the impact of coronavirus. Close to 100 farmers are now stranded with ready rice in the farms due to the lack of labor forces to help them harvest. This is as a result of the locals following the government directive to stay at home and avoid contracting the COVID-19 virus. Our Migori correspondent James Latano was at the Lower Kuja Irrigation Scheme and filed this report in Sagama village where the farmers along this place described this year as one of the most difficult times of their farming in this area since the inception of this project two years ago. It is harvesting time and they're having very difficult time to get laborers. This being that the locals are keeping indoors as one of the preventive measures to prevent the spread of coronavirus. We use the local laborers for scaring the birds. The corona outbreak I've sent them packing. We are now in uh, facing serious losses because of the dangers of the birds. Uh, because of the curfew, the farmers who are coming from far, from uh, as far as Muru Bay, Uto, right now they cannot come to the project for uh, casual as casual laborers. The corona scare has done a lot of damage to farmers. Even at the weeding stage, they would not get enough labor force that would help them to catch up with the times of harvesting. This has delayed their production. The weeding has been a challenge. I've been looking for laborers now three weeks since the corona started. They are coming in small numbers. The farmers are many. We can't compete among the small farmers that are coming for the work. Uh, before the disease, we were producing uh, an acre would give us 35 to 40 bags. But now the production has lowered up to 25 to 18, depending on how the management is done. And with the problems that has faced farmers in this area, it is eminent that production is going to be low. This is not only going to affect them as farmers, but it's going even to affect the economy of Migori County. Reporting for Citizen Television from Nyatike area of Migori County, I'm James Latano. Mm, thanks, Latano. It is now mandatory for passengers on public service vehicles to wear protective masks after the government warned of a heightened threat of contracting coronavirus. The directive was issued on Thursday by Health Cabinet Secretary Mtai Kagwe when he updated Kenya's COVID-19 death toll. The infection cases rising to the number of 142 so far. Miriam Nyambura is doing a spot check in Nakuru. Miriam, it's great to see you this morning. You seem to have your mask with you. Um, our border border operators and Matatu conductors following the new directives from the government. Well, indeed, Zinzi, uh, they now actually understand the gravity of the situation at the moment, uh, considering the cases have risen to 142 since the first case uh, was reported on uh, 13th of March. But uh, at the moment, uh, as you can see, quite the town is actually deserted at the moment. That is something that we have actually witnessed for the past uh, uh, two weeks. I uh, remember Matatu operators were actually uh, driven out of the town, as well as uh, Boda Boda operators. That's why you're not seeing much activity here. But uh, we are actually seeing many of them actually adhering to this guideline. I remember that as much as uh, uh, Matatu operators were actually asked to do that, I remember also border border operators are also encouraged to have their masks with them as well as uh, provide one for their passengers. Each uh, each uh, of the Matatu border border operators, sorry, is also expected to clean their helmet uh, after every trip. So at the moment, we are seeing that uh, there are those who have actually adhered to this guideline, and there are those who are 
were actually concerned about uh, the pricing of the masks within uh, the various areas. Remember, uh, actually, the prices have actually uh, shot up uh, because there are those who are actually holding this commodity. There are those uh, who are actually saying that it's quite expensive. Uh, we've done a spot check across our various uh, chemists. There are those which are actually retailing at one piece, retaining, retailing at 10 shillings to 70 shillings, but there are those, uh, a whole pack of uh, 50 masks are retailing at 5,000 shillings. So even uh, for most of the chemists actually is that uh, they don't have uh, this, produ this product actually. So it's something that uh, of course Kenyans are actually concerned about that, the pricing of the mask as well as uh, the availability as well. But uh, we are also seeing uh, some businessmen, uh, it's actually a business that has is actually booming at the moment. Hawkers who previously uh, sold uh, various products are now actually selling uh, the mask. Uh, there are those who are selling them using, uh, they're made out of fabric. So retailing at 50 to 70 uh, shillings. So at the moment there are those who actually are tearing to various supermarkets. Uh, the, the, the cashiers there are actually tearing to this as well as uh, Boda Boda and Matatu operators and other Kenyans who are actually uh, making their way to the Nakuru CBD. So but there are those actually who are yet to adhere to this guideline owing to the fact that uh, the producer, the, the, the masks are not readily available and the cost uh, Zinzi. Right, and Miriam, before we let you go, could you confirm for me two things? We know that Jack Ma had donated 20,000 masks. Government has also said um, for PSVs, uh, for public matatus rather, and for border border operators, masks will be free. Are border border uh, operators in Akuru having to purchase these masks and also the sanitizers? Well, uh, that is a situation that we're actually following up on with uh, the county commissioner, Nakuru County, by the name Erastus Mbui, in regards to uh, the provision of the sanitizers. But what we are seeing so far is that uh, they are not yet available to the residents. Uh, we uh, will follow up on that matter. But at the moment, uh, Boda Boda operators are actually purchasing their own uh, masks. Uh, this is something, remember, for them, they are actually concerned about the pricing as well as the number of trips. Uh, some saying that... Uh, if you can just make a trip uh, or two for a day, that would cost possibly 200 shillings. Then where do you get that amount of money to purchase uh, the mask? So at the moment, they're actually purchasing the masks for themselves. But uh, in regards to the provision of the GOK uh, sanitizers, we will speak to the county commissioner in relation to that. All right. Thank you so much, Miriam. That's Miriam speaking to us from Nakuru about the situation there, keeping an eye on the border border operators as well as Matatu conductors. Let's now take you back to Kilifi, where Deputy Governor Gideon Saburi is expected today to be charged in court for defying a government directive to solve quarantine after he returned to the country from a trip to Germany. The governor, who was arrested on Friday afternoon, minutes after leaving the Coast General Hospital, spent the weekend at the pol Port Police. And our reporter, Francis Mtalaki, is now joining us to share more with us. Mtalaki, do we know what time we're expecting the governor in court? Well, so far, we don't know the exact time that uh, the deputy governor uh, from Kilifi County, Gideon Saburi, will be uh, brought before uh, court. And we're also uh, trying to confirm because the a number of reports that are coming, maybe he could be taken to Malindi in Kilifi County, but as well as uh, some of the reports from Mombasa, from the security operators are saying that uh, they will be charging him here in Mombasa County at Mombasa Local, so he's said to face a number of charges, including refusing to self-quarantine him uh, himself uh, when he jetted back from Germany. That was la early last month. And uh, with regard to the what uh, his arrest that happened uh, uh, last Friday, where he has he has been uh, staying at the Coast General Hospital uh, after recovering from uh, the COVID-19, and we expect today then he will be brought before uh, the Coast. And once well, we are able to uh, get uh, confirmation with regard to where specifically he will be charged. And we will be relaying that information to our viewers and uh, possibly uh, try to see if uh, the security operators and the courts will allow us in terms of uh, making sure that we can be able to cover uh, the uh, court proceedings that will be happening, especially here in Mombasa where he was arrested. And uh, he spent the, uh, the weekend at Port Police where he uh, asked after he was arrested, he was taken to Port Police and uh, he has spent uh, the weekend and for the last two days he has been there and today we expect any moment from now we get confirmation from the police uh, as to uh, where he will be headed to and the charges that uh, the Deputy Governor from Kilifi County will be facing. Back to you, Sinzi. 
All right, thank you so much, Mtalaki. That's Mtalaki in Kilifi. Remember, Kilifi, Mombasa, and Nairobi are just some of the county hotspots. And remember, Kilifi has been having a water situation since February. That story brings us to an end here on Daybreak. Those are your hourly updates. Speaking of hourly updates, up next is the Seminar Citizen team. They'll be giving you updates um, at the top of every hour concerning COVID-19, as well as we're keeping an eye on the floods that have been happening across the country, given the rains that the weatherman has told us. On behalf of the entire team and myself, Zinzi Kibiku, good morning. Good morning.